Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Jai Om Vishnu Bhad Paramahamsa Hari Raja Kacharya Ashtata Satishla Asi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Srila Prabhupada Ki Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Shri Shri Krishna Balaram Ki Shri Shri Radha Govinda Madhava Ki Agoa Pre Manandi All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to Shri Guru and Grango All glories to Srila Prabhupada Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani Namaste Sadasate Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nevase Shushunyavadi Pastachade Shatarni Hare Krishna Hare Bhav Prabhus Nice to be in contact with you wherever you are in different parts of the world um, This evening we're going to uh, for me this is a little unusual this is, I don't do this very often, but Monday, mon we're planning Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, we may change the time to your convenience if we can. Um, I like to keep keep in touch if you do have any comments with Yash or Rasikananda Prabhu or Garanga Prema Prabhu. Um, this is the time at the moment we're going to be doing it, and we may change the time. So we haven't got too much time. We're experimenting right now. We have about thirty minutes. Um, and this evening, um, we're going to read from Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So if you want to follow, if you've got a copy of the Bhagavatam, or you can look online on, you know, on your computer or whatever, I'm going to be reading from the fifth canto of Bhagavatam. This is from the 18th chapter. And we're going to read, first of all, we're going to read text number seven this evening. And if all goes well, we'll, we'll go on with the other verses other days. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 There's a message there. This is a Pallad Maharaj, regarding the prayers of the residents of Jambudweep, offering prayers. I'm not going to read the Sanskrit, it's a long verse of prose. Verse. Shukadeva Goswami continued, My dear King, Lord Nishingadev resides in the tract of land known as Hari Varsha. In the seventh canto of Sriman Bhagavatam, I shall describe to you how Pallad Maharaj caused the Lord to assume the form of Nrsimhadev. Pallad Maharaj, the topmost devotee of the Lord, is a reservoir of all the good qualities of great personalities. His character and activities have delivered all the fallen members of his demoniac family. Lord Nishingadev is very dear to this exalted personality. Thus, Pallad Maharaj, along with his servants and all the denizens of Hari Varsh, worship Lord Nishingadev by chanting the following mantras. I think maybe you should come around here, Yash, so if any messages come, you can see them and respond accordingly. Yes, Hare Krishna. Yes. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, Jayadev Goswami's ten prayers 
worshipping the incarnations of Lord Krishna, Keshava, contain his name in every stanza. For example, Keshava Trita Narahari Rupa Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare and Keshava Drita Bahamana Rupa Jaya Jagadisha Hare The word Jagadish refers to the proprietor of all the universes. His original form, the two-handed form of Lord Krishna, standing with a flute in his hands and engaged in tending the cows, as stated in the Brahma. <laughs> Lakshaviteshu surabir abhipayantam Lakshmi sahasa sata sambrama sevyaman Govindam hari purusham tamaham bhajami I worship Govinda, the primeval lord, the first progenitor who is tending the cows, yielding all desires in abodes built with spiritual gems and surrounded by millions of purpose trees. He is always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune. From this verse, we learn that Govinda or Krishna is the Adi Purusha, the original person. The Lord has innumerable incarnations exactly like the innumerable waves of a flowing river. But the original form is Krishna or Keshav. Shukadeva Goswami refers to Nishinkadev because of Pallad Maharaj. Pallad Maharaj was put into great distress by his powerful father, the demon Hiranyakashipu. Apparently helpless before him, Pallad Maharaj called on the Lord, who immediately assumed the gigantic form of Nishingadev, half lion and half man, to kill the gigantic demon. Although Krishna is the original person, one without a second, he assumes different forms just to satisfy his devotees or to execute a specific purpose. Therefore, Jayadev Goswami always repeats the name of Keshav, the original personality of Godhead, in his prayers, describing the Lord's different incarnations for different purposes. Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here we have a beautiful section from the Srimad Bhagavatam and the next two verses, which we, Krishna willing, will cover in the next two classes, are very deep and very significant prayers, which for all of us aspiring servants, aspiring servants of the devotees, are very relevant. Um, it's noted here in this verse, several points are there. First of all, um, Prabhupada is establishing herein um, by quoting Jayade Goswami, Krishna is the origin of all, he's the avatar of all incarnations. Although we do, naturally we chant the glories of the various incarnations and the various incarnations are glorified in Srimad Bhagavatam. But Krishna is the fountainhead, he's the source of all. Eti Chansa Kalapungsam, Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam. He's the original source of all the various forms of Godhead. That's one um, essential understanding, as Prabhupada mentions here, that Krishna, the original form, two-handed, playing on the flute. Um, and another major point here is the mood of evoking the Lord to appear, um, which is the point which we'll touch on a little bit this evening, in a few minutes which we have, um, is the mood of Lord of Prahlad Maharaj, 
because he was endowed with all divine qualities, pure hearted, fixed in the mode of Vishuddha Sattva. We were listening to a class this morning by Srila Prabhupada um, describing this topic actually. How Srila Prabhupada was saying that we have to come to the platform of Vishuddha Sattva. Because on the platform of Vishuddha Sattva or pure goodness, uh, one cannot be um, affected by the material energy. And to evoke the Lord, Prabhupada said that we may come to the mode of goodness, and the mode of goodness is every risk of being affected by the other modes. When we come to Vishuddha Sattva, pure goodness, there's no influence of the other modes of material nature. As we can read in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, in the second chapter, um, where Shruti Goswami describes how by engaging Nasta Prashu Bhadri Shri Chim Bhagavata Sevya, uh, by engaging in devotional service, full, full service, rendering service to the great devotees, and by hearing the message of Srimad Bhagavatam regularly, all the dirty things in the heart are practically destroyed entirely. And the consequence of that, well, we can just read the, the verses, they're really beautiful. In the second chapter, we can't, I've got the wrong one. <laughs> That's the first canto. Um, we're describing how the effects of the modes of passion and ignorance are removed. One comes to the platform of pure goodness in that stage of pure goodness. Um, one can probably went on to say that then Krishna appears. He manifests when, when our hearts are fixed in pure goodness. So the process of which we're trying to follow is to come to that platform of pure goodness. Because we read, we can read in many different places, um, how great devotees call upon the Lord and the Lord immediately appears. Even at our stage, um, probably there's a special mercy of the Lord, even though we may not be on that platform. If we, we call with all sincerity, he will appear to protect his devotee. We can take, for example, um, the, the story of in, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, also in the first canto of, of um, the time when Ashvatama tried to destroy the, the embryo in the womb of Uttara and the wife of Abhimanyu, and how um, Uttara called out. This is the ninth chapter, uh, the ninth, eighth, can eighth chapter of the first canto, text number nine. And she called out, O Lord of Lords, Lord of the universe, you are the greatest of mystics. Please protect me, for there is no one else who can save me from the clutches of death in this world of duality. And Baba said, this material world is a world of duality in contrast with the oneness of the absolute realm. The world of duality is composed of matter and spirit, whereas the absolute world is complete spirit without any tinge of the material qualities. In the dual world, everyone is falsely trying to become the master of the world, whereas in the absolute world, the Lord is the absolute Lord, and all others are his absolute servitors. In the world of duality, everyone is envious of all others, and death is inevitable due to the dual existence of matter and spirit. The Lord is the only shelter of fearlessness for the surrendered soul. One that cannot save himself from the cruel hands of death in the material world without having surrendered himself at the lotus feet of the Lord. <clears throat> we may be trying to save ourselves in so many different ways in this world right now. Um, all over the world, we know that people are Many, many people are experiencing fear, or even worse, they're experiencing um, some very um, painful sicknesses. But this is the nature of the material world. You can't avoid it. It's just a matter of which way. The material energy, you could say, um, disposes our reactions upon us. Um, but there's no way out. There's no, there's no shelter in this material world. People try to, we all try to find different shelters to try to protect ourselves from mental and physical sufferings, various kinds of sufferings in this world. We try to take shelter of fallible soldiers in this world. Those methods which we try to take shelter of, as Pallad Maharaj also describes in the seventh canto, um, they cannot save us, even a strong boat in the ocean, Parents, good, good doctors, good medicine, ultimately cannot save us from the um, inevitable of this material world. The, the dangers of this world are manyfold. Um, viruses may be one of them. Many other kinds of dangers 
are there at every step. As we see in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, also described there by Shukadeva Goswami, Samashita Ye Parapalavabhavam, Mahatpadam Punya Yasho Marare. That there's danger in this world at every step. We may sometimes feel there's not. We have our various, you could say, um, artificial means of protecting ourselves um, from various kinds of threats or dangers which we encompass in this material world. But ultimately, there's nothing that can protect us. Only if we take shelter of Marari, um, the Supreme Person, Lotus Feet of the Supreme Lord, only then can we become free from the, the dangers which we have to face, whatever they may be, other living entities, our own body, our own mind, material nature, and ultimately the fourfold miseries of material existence, birth, death, disease, and old age. And no matter who we are, scientists, leaders in society, uh, rich people, poor people, it doesn't matter where we're from, what religion we follow, we all have to succumb to the effects of the material nature. And there's a reason for that, to help us to realize that we are basically helpless. Um, and we try to cover it over by various experts, scientific, uh, let's say, uh, claims and various medicines and all kinds of different promises and various types of philosophies and so on. But ultimately, the only shelter is that we take shelter of Krishna. We were listening to Srila Prabhupada lecture this afternoon also and how he was describing how if one takes shelter of Krishna, he was saying, although the sickness may be there, but one will not, not have to suffer the pain. One will not have to suffer like others who are in ignorance of what's going on. The devotee knows this is the nature of the material world. Um, and we see in, you know, so in the 10th canto there, how Lord Brahma pr pr prays um, that... Um, you know, he prays, even let me suffer, even if I am suffering. Um, I'm only getting a, a, a small drop um, of the suffering, which, I, which I'm actually due to get, materially speaking. In that stage, the devotee doesn't pray to the Lord, please deliver me from my suffering. But rather, he takes shelter of the Lord and just glorifies the Lord, do as you wish for me. He knows that the Lord is our protector, Krishna declares that you know, my devotee should never be vanquished. So it's not so much the physical body, he can do as he likes. In the case of Prahlad Maharaj, he, did, he protected, the, you could say he protected the physical body, but Prahlad Maharaj never asked for that. Prahlad Maharaj just simply took shelter of Krishna. Krishna had his plans where he protected the physical body of Prahlad Maharaj. In our case, whatever the Lord wishes to do, of course, we also desire that being neophytes on the path of devotion. But ultimately, the real protection is within our hearts, that, he, that we don't forget, that we don't forget Krishna. That's the real protection. We pray to Krishna. Brother, one time he wrote to Devananda Prabhu, he said that the only prayer we need is this prayer, my dear Lord Krishna, you are sitting in my heart as a super soul. You can cause me to remember or to forget. Please never, please always remind me, excuse me, always remind me to chant your holy names and never forget you. Whether you send me to heaven or to hell, it doesn't matter. But always please remind me to chant your holy names. So as Krishna, we have to remember, even remembrance to remember Krishna. Everything comes from Krishna. You know, forgetfulness, everything comes from Krishna. It's a reciprocation. Krishna is reciprocating with us. So all times we should remember, in one sense, danger is there. Sometimes when we directly experience what we call danger, we may call upon Krishna, but the pure devotee is always calling upon Krishna. It's not that at any moment... You know, only when danger comes, then we call upon Krishna. In all moments, the devotee is taking shelter of Krishna. One time when Prabhupada was giving a, a lecture in, in, I think it was in Bombay, I'm not sure, but he was describing how any of us can fall down from our spiritual situations any time. The material energy is very strong, very powerful. We shouldn't take it for granted. Um, any of us can fall. Only the Uttama Bhagavat, one who is fixed in pure devotional service, cannot fall from this platform of of, uh, of, of, of um, Krishna consciousness. And then afterwards, Prabhupada was praying. In his room, his servant came and he saw that Prabhupada was praying to Srimati Radharani to please protect him that he not fall under the influence of the external energy. And the servant asked Prabhupada to, he was a bit bewildered, knowing that Prabhupada was in Tamati Karu. Prabhupada exp explained this is the nature of a devotee. <coughs> he was actually safe. <coughs> is that it's not that they're safe because they have some special. Um, you know, strength of their own per se, 
but they're taking shelter of the <clears throat> internal potency. They're taking shelter of Radharani every moment of their lives. Not only when it, you know when we're reminded to, um, as we're doing, but at least we can practice. And by hearing the prayers of great souls like Pulat Maharaj, so many prayers are there in the Shiman Bhagavatam. It's full of prayers. Um, and we also see in, in the case, so many cases are there. You could say of the boys who took shelter of Krishna in extreme circumstances, but actually in their heart they're always taken. Here's a beautiful one. This is from the Nectar of Devotion um, in the section of Krishna's Qualities, number 17. It's called Grateful. Any person who is conscious of his friend's beneficent activities and never forgets his service is called grateful. In the Mahabharata, Krishna says, when I was away from Draupadi, she cried with the words, hey Govinda, this call for me has put me in her debt, and that indebtedness is gradually increasing in my heart. This statement by Krishna gives evidence of how one can please the Supreme Lord simply by addressing him, hey Krishna, hey Govinda. We usually hear this in relationship to her. The, um, the, the trial that she went through in the court of the Kauravas when Dushashan and Karna were trying to disgrace her in front of all of the other Kauravas, including her own husbands, and how Krishna came to protect her. Um, so we, but these examples are there to remind us, but actually at every moment we should take this on board. And how do we do that? The Mahamantra Prabhupada says, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hari, Hari, is also simply an address to the Lord and his energy. So to anyone who is constantly engaged in addressing the Lord and his energy, we can imagine how much the Supreme Lord is obliged. It is impossible for the Lord to ever forget such a devotee. It is clearly stated in this verse that anyone who addresses the Lord immediately attracts the attention of the Lord, who always remains obliged to him. This is a very... Um, important point to remember and uh, the Lord becomes obliged how he becomes obliged he, he acts, he reciprocates in such a way as to arrange situations whatever it may be it may be on the world scale, it may be on the local scale maybe within our hearts or all of those different places but the Lord is always acting in such a way to give us a chance to come to him to take shelter at his lotus feet and not to think that we can take shelter of this mind and body and this material world. We use it. But we have to realize that this is the only real shelter from the dangers of this material world. So we're going to finish there. Our 30 minutes is now up. No, Maharaj, we huh? have uh, Zoom has extended it for uh, unlimited time. Uh, Zoom has extended for unlimited time. That sounds like they've transcended the three modes of nature. And I've come to the spiritual platform where there's unlimited time. There's no birth, death, disease, and old age anymore. Is that what's happened? So you can speak as long as uh, until midnight, Maharaj. Uh, yes, well, that's <laughs> another thing. We have another Zoom call at well, uh, our time, 7 o'clock. Um, so, um, yeah, well, anyway, that was the plan. You're only just telling me this. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, if it's technologically possible. More, be. more, more. One more, one more. One more? One more what? One more, one more. <laughs> That's the high last prayer of Sankatan in Newcastle. <laughs> well, it's nice. Why don't, you ask, why don't you ask some questions? This is our first evening, you know. And uh, it's an experiment on our side. If, if we, we will do it more if it works. But we're going to ask some more questions. Uh, Maharaj, you have to tell them to ask it by check. By check? Yes, no, check. Check? You can read. The, you have to send it in, in check or by check? I don't understand so check. So they will leave a message and I will read it out to you. Oh, well, if you do want to ask, ask, another, if, ask a question, you're welcome. You can leave it by, uh, you can check, you have to write it, you have to type it? Or what? Yes, you have to type it. You have to type it and some other, Yash, who's sitting, you come here, this is Yash. He's a facilitator. Can't see much of it except at the top of your head. Howdy, boy. Here he is. He's been working hard. He got marooned here. You know, we're in New. I'm in New Mayapur, and uh, I was supposed to be in India, but a few days before my flight, they, the Indian um, government cancelled all visas. So I, and then, of course, the lockdown came, so we couldn't move. So I got marooned here in New Mayapur, and a few of us. He also got marooned. He's 
he works for Michelin, a tire company. So he was here for the weekend and he ended up here for nearly two months. Entirely. So Krishna has his arrangement and nothing is by chance. This is this uh, situation we're in. It's um, actually we're all, you know, the word lockdown is a very interesting word. If we look at the definition of the word lockdown, it refers to basically traditionally and it refers to prisoners being locked in their cell. Um, and they can't get out, you know, they've been naughty boys, so they, they keep them penned in, you know. So it's kind of like the material world in one sense, we're all locked in our cells. <laughs> we may think we're free cells, but actually, you know, we're all in this body, which is like a combination of many cells. It's like one big cell in our mind and our bodies. We're kind of locked in there. And they can't really do much about that in the material sense of the term. So being locked, locked down for a devotee, in one sense, is, 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 it may vary, but in one sense, it can be very favorable also. And more chance to hear and chant and read and, and just reflect on our, on our, our devotional service, you could say. Um, in, but in New Mayapur, where I'm staying at the moment, it's a farm with about um, how many hectares have we got here? 80? 80, 80 plus hectares, that's about 180 or so acres, if you're from acre land. Huh? Arti sends a message. She says, Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful lecture. Only say if there's a question. Okay. Um, so we're, Hari Bo Arti, so we're, we're lucky here because we, we've got mountains of service to do here. And when Prabhupada was here in New, in New Mayapur, he talked so much about farming, growing our own food. And he talked about fixing, fixing up the buildings, building our own simple little houses. And right now, by Krishna's grace, you know, so many, so many devotees are kind of marooned here. There's about four, how many devotees are you here at the moment? Like 48. 48 devotees are marooned here. <laughs> it's probably your highest number of decades, right? Probably in many decades, as far as a long period is concerned. So there's plenty of service here. But even in your own homes, you can find plenty of service. I'm sure you can find many things to do. Of course, if you're technological, you can go online and share Krishna consciousness. Many of us around the world are distributing books online. I saw in Mayapur that they're distributing many books online. Thousands of books a day going out. It may not be, we can't do that so easy because the post office is closed. But they're doing so many books online. There's always ways of sharing Krishna consciousness with your family, um, with whoever. It's rather said we can even preach to the four walls. If there's no one physically present, we can just read the Bhagavatam or chant Hare Krishna. We're so lucky. You know, what are other people doing? I don't know what they're doing. What's your boss doing, Yash? He showed me a video of what he was doing. He was really sat around the table going boom, 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 ch -ch -ch -ch, like this. They don't know what to do. People just don't know what to do. And they're fed up for watching TV, maybe. But, you know, we've got so much opportunity and, uh, and we can also communicate. This is one way with other devotees, which we may not normally do, you know. It's, it's, it's interesting. There's always a reason for everything, positive reason. Devotee takes, it's like a businessman, Prabhupada says, even in the mo most difficult situations in war or right now in this lockdown, whatever it is, an actual businessman, he's making fortune in any situation. No matter what it is, he knows how to adjust. So a devotee, no matter what the situation, takes advantage of that situation. It's like, a, we just, maybe we just heard, or we heard earlier on this evening, how Prabhupada was saying that, you know, a devotee doesn't mind if he, if he goes to heaven or hell, even in hell, he sees, what is the difference? What is actually a devotee? Because he sees hell is also in the kingdom of God. Just a different, you know, maybe a different temperature might be a little different, or the color may be a little different. Well, the activities may be a bit different, but it's still all the energy of Krishna is the energy of God. And one who is remembering Krishna in any situation, um, he is not disturbed by that. So that's, a, that's a little test of Krishna. So let's try to take shelter of the holy name. All together, let us chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वी हैव अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम बैक टू लाटा डाउन इन केरला आई यू इन आई गेस यू इन केरला और बेंगलोर and uh, she's asking a question here that um the, the, the chanting of hari krishna if it's so powerful um uh, why do we have to resort to anything else like nishinga kavacha or any of these other prayers or any other kinds of shelters um we're, here we're talking of course in relation to krishna we're not talking of mundane shelters we're talking of um maybe mantras addressing other forms of the lord well prophet gave us when shri prophet was sick in new york back in 1967 um in san francisco new york he gave us his uh, mantra to chant namaste narashingaya balada lada dayane for protection i'm shri dev is also krishna well it's a good question in one sense you don't need to but it's like prophet said when he was discussing a slightly different subject he was discussing the varna ashram um how at certain stages prophet would say we we don't need the varna ashram we, it's not realistic in this age and so on and at a later stage he said it's absolutely required and then devotees of course then were a little perplexed but prophet you said you know just chanting hari krishnas with the varna ashram is not practical so then prophet said well if you can just chant hari krishna that's okay that's perfect but we can't we're not hari das thakur we're not on that level we don't have that pure our hearts are not that pure we have so many other things going on in our heart so the lord appears in various ways also to help us to deal with those various things is like in the material world you could say all the answers are there by approaching a pure devotee of the lord you know you don't generally go to the pure devotee of the lord when you break your leg or when you've got some you know mental kind of problem of some kind you go to another person who's expert in that field so the lord appears in different forms as lord nishinga dev <coughs> different other forms of the lord for maybe for various reasons but particularly for those on the path of a pure devotional service lord nishinga dev is very important form of the lord why he because before we can actually approach krishna the heart has to be completely pure And Lord Nishinga Dev is especially enthusiastic to kill all the anartas. Well, we'll hear about that next session. We hope to kill all the anartas in our hearts. And the same thing, you know, the people take. We were listening. What was that lecture? This Lotion and Andhra was some of you may know. He's our temple president here, and he, yesterday he sent me this interesting um, video of a devotee named Amarendra. Amarendra, I don't know much about him. He's from India. He's from America. from america how oh, is american is he yeah okay. born born indian right. ah okay and he was indian body but from america incredible speaker and he was talking about the appearance of lord ram chandra may we also chant the name of lord ram chandra we also hear and worship lord ram chandra uh, and the the voice may have strong affection at different stages to these various forms of the lord but there are various forms of the lord. krishna expands himself in various ways to help us with various situations which we go through they're not separate from krishna it's not like a competitor to god it's not like krishna is like competitor is ramachandra or something they're one and the same but just in different moods different uh, pastimes and so on to attract different devotees and to satisfy us to bring satisfaction to the heart and inspire us when we when we worship lord nishinga dev we become more enthusiastic to chant hari krishna Brothers, we were not able to chant Hare Krishna all the time, so we do take shelter of other, you could say, pastimes and other mantras sometimes 
for various particular reasons. It gives us a strength, it gives us a faith, and a purification of heart. Um, and just like, um, where were we going just now? Oh, this devotee was saying about astrology, for instance. Astrology, Vastu, various Vedic sciences. Um, in, in Indian devotee, and he was talking about how when Lord Ramchandra appeared in the world at midday, and how merciful Lord Ramchandra is because he's more merciful than Krishna because Krishna appears at midnight and you have to fast until midnight. When Ramchandra appears, you only have to fast at midday. So we're waiting for the most merciful avatar who appears at five o'clock in the morning so we can break fast. Anyways, going on. Then he was talking about how when Lord Ramchandra appeared in the world, how all the planets, just like when Krishna appeared, they all adjusted themselves so they were in perfect order, perfect position in, 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 in the, um, the universe um, to welcome the Lord. And he was going, explaining how also, how, you know, when, when a devotee in a pure devotional service, what does it matter what order the, the stars on? And then he quoted one devotee, I don't know the devotee's name, he was a devotee of Gopal Bhattu Goswami, disciple, famous devotee in Vrindavan. We wrote this beautiful bridge Bassi poetry about, um, you know, how, how wonderful it would be if all the stars were situated in the right houses astrologically, so on and so forth. You know, people are so keen. Where's this star? Where's that star? Oh, i got this one in this house. What am I going to do? And so on. He's going on like this. And how would you like a, a, an astrology chart like that where every single planet is in the right house to be in a perfect astrology chart? And then, then this great devotee is Brijbasi, then he was quoting in Brijbasi, went on to say, and what about if all the planets are in the wrong house? Everyone's in their opponent, right? everyone's in their opposite house. You've got a disastrous chart, absolutely disastrous. And then, then this devotee goes on and say, but give me that chart, as long as you know, pure devotion to Hari is in the center. It makes no difference. He said, all the planets, if they're rightly situated, might give you one good lifetime. And then that's it. They put you in another body after that, in the material world. But if all the planets are wrongly situated at the end of this lifetime, but your, your devotion will surrender to Krishna. Sometimes when we have these difficult situations, it causes us to surrender to Krishna. It brings us to that point of giving up, trying to defend ourselves and just shelter Krishna. At the end of this lifetime, they all salute the devotee and push you back to God, you could say. Back you go. You don't belong in this world. So for a devotee, every situation is good. But you know, if a spontaneous attraction is there to Lord Nishinade, Prabhupada did. He, 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 he himself introduced this into his come with us, or other prayers to Lord Nishinade, whatever. It's not that we spend all our time on it. Our concentration is on chanting Hare Krishna, but it can help us. I know myself, and perhaps many of those have had a similar experience. In certain situations, spontaneously, we take shelter of Lord Nishingade to remove the de demons in the heart, to kill the obstacles on our path of devotional service, because we're having difficulty chanting Hare Krishna. We're having difficulty taking shelter of the pure holy name. And, and we call upon Lord Nishingade to remove even Bhakti Vinod Thakur. In one of his songs, he describes how, um, this is regarding Nishingapali in Mayapur, how we would go there and pray to Lord Nishingade to remove the obstacles on the path so we can actually experience pure devotional service and develop our love for Radha and Krishna. So Lord Nishingade, the purpose of chanting Nishingakavacha is not a material purpose, it's to remove the obstacles on our path so that we can actually um, come to the platform of pure, loving, devotional service to Radha and Krishna. I don't know if that helps. Anyone else like to comment on that? Hare Krishna. You have one more question, Maharaj. Another question? Yes, Maharaj. It's from Gora Nitai Das. What is your daily schedule? Gornitai Prabhu in Paris. Hare Bhav, Gornitai Prabhu. Goni Thai Prabhu was uh, Pajari, had Pajari in Paris, and they're really in lockdown there. There's just six or seven devotees in the temple. And they're looking after three sets of what beautiful installed deities, Radha Paris, Ishwar, etc. Our daily schedule right now, well, I'm a little embarrassed to say my daily schedule. I wouldn't want to advertise it to 
everyone, but I'm, as I may be, maybe you're aware, of, at this time I'm supposed to be, what is the date today? I don't know. 17th, 18th? 17th. Today I'm supposed to be leaving, um, um, what's it called? Wada? Yeah. Go over that, go over that yeah. echo village in, in, uh, in Maharashtra. I'm supposed to be leaving there today. I'm supposed to have been there for the last three or four weeks, um, getting a little tune, little tune ups, Ayurvedic tune ups. Um, and that was the idea that someone, as I mentioned earlier, we got marooned here at New Maipo. So I've been on a, a kind of a, a strange schedule and I found it very difficult to change it where I've been pretty much staying up all night and sleeping at ridiculous hours and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Um, and I've tried and even several times I've, I've fallen asleep early and you, on most occasions somehow or another something wakes me up after a few minutes. And that's the, that's the end of my night's sleep. But occasionally I get to sleep at night. But our general schedule here has been, um, as I say, normal, of course, for the temple. But most nights I've been up, most nights I've been working on a few things on the Kirtan standards, um, manual, <laughs> wash out. Um, there might be a Kirtan standards manual out by next year. And of course, a few little things, like big things, in one sense, properly as a puja homage. And lots of other little writing things and communicating with devotees and like that. It's occupied most of the, most of the night and during the day here at New Mayapur. And the devotees, uh, I don't know how busy they've been, but there's certain things going on here with fixing the roof. I'm not doing that. I've been out in, in the field a lot. In the um, We have this area where we have a, um, a thorn bush plantation. If anyone needs any thorn bushes, you can please write to us quickly. We can send you any amount of thorn bushes if you, if you want one. But we've been cutting down the thorn bushes and we're hoping to uh, turn the land back into usable, either agricultural or grasslands or something. Like that. Working on that. A lot of the boys have been working in the gardens. Um, the morning program goes on, evening programs going on right now, as usual in the temple. We're very isolated here, nobody's coming. Which normally nobody comes much anyway, we're in the middle of the countryside. <laughs> but now it's just the devotees who are living here, so we're kind of isolated. But with so many devotees, you hardly notice that there's anything going on outside. Um, that's basically our program, reading, chanting, rendering service, uh, whatever we can render around the project, talking with devotees whenever we can. Morning and evening program goes on. So I'm not, all, I'm not there most of the time because of my schedule sometimes. As I say, I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> it's not the normal schedule. Normal schedule is otherwise, we all know that. But, uh, time, place, and circumstance. Uh, Maharaj, you have one more question from Olivia. <coughs> is this from Olivia? Olivia? Olivia is also in Paris. I know it's easy for the divorce in Europe. It's harder for the divorce in Australia and New Zealand because right now it's probably I don't know what time it is, six o'clock in the morning or something, some early hour of the day. Um, America and Europe is easy. Australia, and the hardest is India. I see one or two divorces from India online. And uh, really thank you for coming. Um, because in India right now, what's the time in India? 10 o'clock? 10.20 p.m. 10.20, I'm sorry, it's so late for you. We might, please let us know if, if you think of a better time to adjust. Um, from Olivia, what's the question? It's easy to take shelter while receiving our bad karma, but how to handle to properly remember the Lord while receiving our good karma? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I get any good karma. <laughs> it's so sinful. You know, we get used to what we get, and we may think it's good karma. I don't know. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Anyway, it's relative, relatively sometimes better than others, that's for sure. How to take shelter? Well, that's what proper was describing just now in that section in the Nectar of Devotion, that uh, we should always chant the holy name of Krishna. You know, in the past time of Haridas Thakur, when he was being whipped in the marketplaces by the Muslim guards, how he was chanting constantly, and the same thing, of course, with Prahlad Maharaj, the same principle, he wasn't asking for anything in return. There's a connection between Prahlad, Haridas, Lord Brahma, Vasudev, Dutta, they're all Basically, the same, you could say the same options of the Lord. They have the simply taking shelter of the Lord, just showing us in all circumstances. It wasn't like as soon as the whipping started, Haridas stopped chanting. Did he? 
as soon as, he, as soon as the whipping stopped, did he stop chanting? Hey, that's over. Now we can, you know, he, he was always, always chanting, uh, always chanting, always chanting the holy name of Krishna. And today is the appearance day of Vrindavan Das Thakur. Yeah, appearance day of Vrindavan Das Thakur. Then part the Chaitanya Bhagavan. Vrindavan Das Thakur says that, you know, the lesson to be learned from this, Nirantara Namalau, he said, that's the lesson to be learned from Haridas Thakur. But he chanted constantly, constantly. He didn't go to wait for the time. Oh, what am I going to do now? I better start chanting. He was constantly chanting, and Prabhupada emphasized this for sure. Every spare moment. I know that working people, most of you are working at normal times, and maybe you've got families and so on, you're busy. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that means every spare moment we should chant the holy name of Krishna, chant the Mahamantra whenever we can. There may be other ways too. I mean, we have other services, nine limbs of devotion service, but to try to keep someone or another engaged in devotion service all times. And it's not actually everywhere in the material world is dangerous, as we heard earlier on, the um, at least in the 10th Canto Bhagavatam, that every, every moment is dangerous. So how to remember that? Well, we have to practice chanting Hare Krishna at every moment. You know, any moment, Prabhupada one time was asked, how should we chant? So we should chant. We should chant as if this is my last breath. It will be one day. And we don't know when that day will come. We have no idea. But by regularly hearing from script, scriptures, associating with devotees, we can be reminded to always chant the holy name. I did mention a prayer earlier on, which Prabhupada gave us, which uh, Prabhupada gave that we should pray to Krishna to always remind us to chant at all times. You know, there's no, there's no, actually, there's no real good karma in one sense. Every karma is binding us in this world, in the mode of goodness, even if you're getting good karma, is also very binding. One becomes attached you know, to good situations. That's just as dangerous, more dangerous, in fact, than bad situations in one sense, bad karma. And because we become attached to it, it's something we may become. That's why in the heavenly planets is more difficult in many ways. Because there, the demigods are having a pretty good time of it materially. So, you know, when we're in difficult situations, you're right. Sometimes it's easier to take shelter. Uh, but we have to show, we have to practice and show by example. In all situations in this material world, birth, death, disease, and old age are always there, no matter where you are. And the threefold miseries are always there. Um, maybe to different degrees according to karma and so on. Yeah. And there's another one, there's a private one. Uh, yeah, be careful while pulling out the thorn bushes. I can't read the rest of it. Yeah, and yeah, I did hurt my back. It wasn't actually while well, so I was pulling out the thorn bushes. That was the funny thing. I, I hurt my back last four or five days. I haven't been able to go out because I hurt. It wasn't my back actually, it was my, my, my thigh. But it wasn't when I was out there. It was when I was walking to go out. And I suddenly thought my thigh was paining. I couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't do it. So, whatever. Uh, okay, privately. I don't know if I meant to answer this or not. Something about in penances for improving back to yoga. What can you read? Will it be able to help? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is not a material adjustment. By doing various penances, would this adjust our bad karma? Well, for an ordinary person, maybe you could say, I and mean, if they're authorized, not man-made concoctions, if they're, they're called prayasthitas, atonements for various activities. But the devotee doesn't, doesn't take that path. A devotee engages in devotional service. He's not even interested in getting free in one sense of bad karma. In one sense, you could say maybe, even as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that, I uh, can't remember, it slipped my mind, the Sanskrit, it says there that you no know, one has to become freed of all uh, sinful reactions and active piety in this life and the previous life and be freed of the duality of this material world. In order to engage in devotion service with determination, the prophet said, I have created your piety, you know, by the association of a pure devotee. This is the perfection of all austerities, of all, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, forms of penance, etc., are perfected by taking shelter of the pure devotee and following and serving the pure devotee. 
taking shelter of the pure, that is our penance. Our penance is not something outside of that. Where we make her, I mean, maybe for health, you have to do a bit of yoga exercise sometimes, that's okay. If you have to. But the real penance is taking shelter of the pure devotee reward. It's not making up some adding something from outside as if this is going to clear our path to pure devotion. We just take shelter of the pure devotee of the Lord's instructions. And try to apply them according to our situation in life. We're all in different situations. We find out what penance is relevant to our situation and apply it in our lives. And that's how we become free of all karmas. Krishna removes all of them. By just chanting the holy name and taking shelter of the pure devotee. What we see as karma coming our way, bad or good, whatever you want to call it, it's not really karma anyway. We sometimes describe it as that, but Prabhupada describes very clearly that right from the very beginning when somebody contacts pure devotional service or a representative of a pure devotee, that the Lord right from the beginning takes his hand. It's not exactly karma. <clears throat> he arranges situations which are, appear like karma, but they're actually situations to cure us of the very mentality which causes us to become entangled in this material world um, and remain in this world of duality. He arranges situations to help release us. Um, so it's not really karma anyway. So the way he doesn't shy away from that. He takes it as, an, as the mercy of the Lord, an opportunity to surrender something favorable for his devotional service. Others may pray and do many things, and that's another thing, but individually, we, we take it as an opportunity for surrendering more to Krishna, and not necessarily to remove. These things will, are, would be taken away by Krishna as and when the situation is favorable um, or for our further progress in spiritual life. Um, yes. It's almost seven o'clock. Oh, it's almost seven o'clock, Prabhu. Well, if there's anyone left there, I don't know if there is. It's 30 you may, people. You may have all signed off by now, had enough, had enough uh, torture. <laughs> one almost one hour. <laughs> Wonderful to be with you all. Thank you so much. And uh, it, it, please, if you have anything to say, please contact either Rasi Kananda Prabhu, um, uh, and Goranga Prema Prabhu, or back to Yash here in New Mayapur. Rasi Kananda Prabhu is in Wellington, Goranga Prema is in Vrindavan, and Yash is here in New Mayapur. So please feel free to contact any of those three if you have any suggestions for improvement, uh, any further questions you may have, uh, or any comments regarding timings, or anything whatsoever. Please let them know so they can try, they can try to improve things. If there's any questions we haven't ans answered, I'd like to thank you all, and many of you have sent your obeisances and kind comments, and I offer my humble obeisance to all of you. Banchaka Patrubhyas Cha, Kripa Sindhu Vyavicha, Patitanam Pavanevyo, Vaishnavavyo, Namo Namaha. Srila Prabhupada, keep chanting. keep chanting, and don't worry, Krishna is in control. Krishna is, my, uh, whatever, Krishna is there in every situation, just try to remember him. Srila Prabhupada, keep chanting, go pray, Manandi. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.